Greetings again, everyone. Tonight we're going to take a look at Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars through the Edge 11 telescope. I've done Venus through the Edge 11 since I got it last year, after having the 8SE before that. And now we'll dig into some Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. Coming up next. <laughs> Again, this is my Edge 11 for, that I do for DSO and Planetary. I have a Hyperstar for DSOs. I also do it at F10 and F7. And then the Planetary arrangement. We've got the, AD, or the um, 2X Barlow, followed by the ADC and the ASI 224 camera. I should also mention where they're at in my sky. This is early August, uh, second week of August. Uh, the planets generally are right up about there. Start, I start at 9.30 and I uh, start recording to do animations for longer term. Uh, Jupiter peaks around 12 or 11.45 this time of year. Saturn, they're just thereafter. And Mars ends up up here later at night after about 1 o'clock here in early August at the heat of the summer. All right, I'm here live at the uh, dome site. We'll do the remote desktop video in a minute, but I had to go live to show a couple of things. Uh, first off, I'm in Stellarium. Let me just make this bigger. You can see my panoramic view and I've added the landscape, taken the panoramic and added the landscape before uh, now I'll scroll over here and here we have Jupiter and I will hit the configure telescopes and connect on the ASCOM mount and connect on the ASCOM sync and the local ASCOM. I don't know about this last one if it's needed or not but I'm pretty sure both of these do. The sync is nice because if you recenter Jupiter or one of the planets and you click the sync button right here uh, that resyncs it so if it goes out of view you can slew and it'll take it right back to where that sync point was that's what that's for so at this point I am going to slew to Jupiter I've had this problem the last few times where for some reason my ASI 224 camera doesn't show up in device manager and the only way to fix that is to pull the cable on the camera itself. I have the cable running into a USB hub on the telescope and that hub goes into the hub connector for USB 3 basically um, the front of the telescope which routes back to the PC. For whatever reason the camera just decides to time out and the only way is to pull the plug and put it back in. All right, here I've got Jupiter brought to center. Now I'm going to go back into Solarium and do the uh, sync button. Gain, I keep that. Uh, uh, Unity gain is a 375, I believe, for the 224. So I go 375 to 400, 410 at the most, typically. And I try to get the uh, histogram over here to be about 75% for Jupiter because they it's been said that you can go about 75 without any ill effects although more on average you want it to be around 60 I believe the other thing I've been able to do although not completely successfully is this auto guiding feature here which is this checkbox will keep it centered or at least try to now I've had problems I've had to play with these settings the correction time previously I had as low as 50 and it was working perfectly but then when I went to Mars I had to really crank it I'm not sure why or what is going on I never quite understood quite on the backlash but these are the numbers that were working for Mars for the most part but I was having all kinds of problems with Mars at first last night just wanting to drift down in the RA axis 
So that's the auto guiding and you have to select it and initialize the interface in here which I've already done. The other key thing is making sure gamma is either checked or not checked but set to 50. And one other key feature in Fire Capture to make sure is set as under the settings if we go to debayer you do not want to debayer and capture color data because if you do this the file size will be twice the file size you want it to be always record record undebayered raw basically raw and previewing color 8-bit raw is what we're after here so here we are uh, with auto guiding on and I've changed that setting correction time from 2000 back down to 30 where I had it before. And it's doing pretty good holding it, but here's the problem I'm running into with the Ioptron mount. If I wanted to use the software to correct it while this checkbox is checked off, if I were to push this left uh, for, de uh, for RA adjustment, nothing happens. While this checkbox is checked off the software doesn't work but if I were to grab the uh, hand controller here and push the left arrow it moves. I'm using the ADC and the fire capture has its ADC tuner and there you can see the circles are lined up in the center so I've got the ADC tuned correctly at least as far as my understanding of the way the tuner works in fire capture. And I come over here and you can see the adjustment the adjustment knobs are here and here and you adjust those until the circles are in the middle but as you adjust them it shifts the, the image up or down, then you have to recenter it and keep repeating until you get it right. Alright, back in fire capture now, and the focus looks pretty good after that. I did tweak it slightly, but uh, either way, and the focus help down here is very useful. It'll show you where you're at at the start, and then you adjust and see if that goes up or down. The other nice thing is that in... Um, Solarium, you can zoom in on Jupiter and you can see the position of the planets or the moons. That's the current arrangement right now, lined up horizontally. Of course, I am not using, uh, I'm not at shooting at f10, I'm at f20, so you really can't see the planets here. I keep all of my data on a network drive and record directly to it across the network from the dome. It actually works well. You would think that the speed of uh, high-speed planetary would be a problem, but for gigabit it seems to work out alright, even if there's a little bit of lag at the end where the data is still uploading. At any rate, uh, here's where Jupiter goes to in my collection. Look here, the current date. Look at the text file, and you can see the histogram max here, or histogram average is at 71. So that was right about where I wanted it to be. And we're back, and I've got Jupiter opened up in this case. Uh, we set it for planet, dynamic background, and noise or bus 4. I go with a normalized stack at 75, RGB align, and anywhere from 16, 15, you know, even 10 to 25% to stack. Here I have it at 16. First thing we do is hit analyze. It'll go through and do its analyze. Okay, the analysis is done. You can see the quality graph here. And now we'll do the AP grid. Now if I find that I'm getting some kind of weird fracturing in Registacks, then these have to be bigger in size due to the seeing conditions or something along those lines. Now everything's ready and I'm going to click Stack. I have it set to send it to Registacks, but Registacks for some reason always has to be open in order for that to work. And between these it's best to close Registacks and reopen it because problems just start to occur in Registacks if you don't do that. Alright, so here we're in Registacks and I'm going to load up one of my schemes here 
on the left hand side you can save these it's kind of handy uh, that's okay I guess uh, of course the first thing I always do is go to RGB balance auto balance that and let's see check these to see if these have any impact how that does. Now see here the noise picked up so you can use the denoise to counter that like right there. Wavelet 4 definitely looks like it's having an impact but then when you go too far the bands start looking over saturated over contrast and ridiculous. Here's a quick example of doing Jupiter in Photoshop the tweaks that I like to do. I go to the adjustments, to vibrance, and you can mess around with the vibrance slider a little bit. If you go too far, it starts to look eccentric. Adds a little bit of pop to it, and the saturation, adding some color, too much, too little, so you get it just about right. The other thing you can do is go to unsharp mask, and uh, first again, make sure you're on the right layer, and then go to Sharpen, unsharp mask, and you can adjust accordingly here. Uh, if you increase the radius pixel size too much, it blows it out. So you got to find that happy medium here where you do get a slight increase in resolution sharpness compared to where you were. And go from the last step to that step, and you can see there's an increase sharpness looks a bit better. Now, of course there's other things you can do too. You can go into adjustments, you can play with the standard curve, you can click on the gray uh, point as well and if we view under info, uh, window info, we look for a gray point that is pretty much the same RGB value and when you click it you get that kind of a transition and here I can just show the difference again from there to there of course there's other adjustments you can adjust brightness contrast uh, you can do gamma as well in here too and Photoshop just helps it get a little bit better than it was coming out of Registacks okay now I'm gonna swing over to Saturn for a little bit here while we wait on the great red spots arrival focus looks pretty good. You can see the Cassini division there and the rings. Uh, now I'm going to create the region of interest, something like this. Lock the auto guide and crank away for 120 seconds for Saturn at the most. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. Pretty crazy how detailed it can even look with the uh, with the um, ASI 224 camera view. All right, here's the uh, pre-stack for the image we just did of Saturn. Here's the APs I decided to go with here, and we're gonna stack and see how it turns out in ready stacks. Should mention the normalized stack I believe is meant to put the histogram at 75%. So if you're at 51 like we were there it'll raise it up to a normal brightness across all the frames at 75 percent. Likewise if you were higher it'll bring it down. Here's our image beforehand, RGB balance it, and now let's load up a scheme. I found one from before and here it is. And you can play around with these layers. And there's what I end up with after playing with the sliders for a while, trying to balance the noise versus the sharpness and finding some happy, happy medium there. All right, we're back to Jupiter now. The great red spot has already moved its way across, and um, I had to adjust the settings for declination axis. I had to increase it from 30 to 70. I'm hoping that that keeps it more centered now because it was drifting up. 
All right, here we are later at night here with Mars. That's uh, Mars through the ASI 224. And uh, I've set my region of interest. Let's see how this turns out to several different exposures for tonight. One thing I've found with Mars is that it's pretty tricky getting that histogram. I generally look at the blue value, and that tends to be the average histogram number reported in the file. The average seems to be based on the blue, and I had a decent result already with uh, keeping it this way. Here we can see it uh, in color after the recording had finished. Looking pretty glorious here.